Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, good evening. This is the Wednesday class. Uh, my name is Elder Ricard Shiar, and this is uh, Brother and Deacon. You can introduce yourself. Um, Deacon Shaquat. Deacon Shaquat. We're here from the Gathering of Christ Church, and um, today we will go into a little history. All right. I did a little study on Islam. Okay. Now, as you all know, we're not against the morality of Islam as far as how women dress and the codes of keeping the law. We respect that content or that part of Islam. But there's a lot that we don't know and as a people we haven't been taught. Number one, and we're not here to bash anyone's religion personally, all right? It's all about truth. Most of our people here in America, especially black Americans, are ignorant to how Islam uh, spread throughout the earth. They're ignorant of its origin. So we're not going to do, deal with any personal attacks. We're going to give you some history so that you'll know the origin of Islam. Could it be the Arabs taught us this information so that they could be over us? Uh, who were the Arabs that introduced us to Muhammad? Do Muhammad have anything to do with the black people here in America or any other races of people that are following Islam today? All right. Over in the Middle East, there's a uh, war going on right now. There's different factions of Islam. And you have America, which is primarily a Christian society, fighting a Muslim society. You're going to find that this is not by chance. This war been going on between the, 8th, the 11th and 12th century in Europe, between Europe and the Arabians. And it was called the time of the Crusades or what they call a holy war. But how is it that our people, the poor on the earth, is getting caught up between these two religions? You have Christianity and you have Islam. Now we're going to try to make this short and condensed and straight to the point. I need you to go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Okay. One moment here. I need you to uh, let's get the conference on real quick through your phone, and we'll we'll place that there. All right. The reason I'm going to Deuteronomy is a lot of you brothers and sisters know that's out there listening today, but for the brothers and sisters that don't know. The Bible is more than just a religious book. The Bible is a history book, okay? It's a history book of a people. And we lost our history in this land. And they did not tell us, the Negroes in America and, and, and the Indian tribes, they did not tell us during our captivity that this book was the book of our forefathers. They didn't let us know that. I'm going to go into this history. I'm going to go into the Babylon of Timbuktu. Is it on now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I'm going to go into the, for the forgotten holocaust, the eastern slave trade. You can actually download this offline. What is this? This is showing you the Arab connection to the slave trade. Because um, when I get an opportunity, I'm going to do a more in-depth study so that you can all uh, go into the research that I'm about to go into today. 
But I will give you an overview. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28th chapter. Let's go into the Bible first. I'm going to give you an overview of how we get so many Muslims in the earth today. You got Deuteronomy? Yeah. I need you to go to Deuteronomy 28 and read the 15th verse. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Lord God told his people, let me get you in here. The Lord God of Israel told his people that if they didn't follow the law, statutes, and commandments that was given to Moses, that all the curses would come upon Israel and overtake them. You're going to find that these curses only fit one group of people in this earth. All right? These curses only fit the poor of the earth. Like the Negroes, the Jamaicans, the Haitians here in America. So let's see some of these curses. And see, they'll never teach you this in Christianity, and they will not teach you this in Islam. Read. Deuteronomy 28 and 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So, because Israel did not listen, now they are cursed in the city. Look what's going on in the city. These prophecies only fit the children of Israel. Look at us in the cities, in the inner cities. And it says, in the field, we are the people that were picking peas, picking cotton, serving in this land. This is talking about the children of Israel. Now, the two biggest religions in the earth, Christianity and Islam, have all this information, and yet they never told you that you were the people written of in the book. Okay? Okay? What is the origin of Islam? Let's keep it condensed to Islam real quick. Now, you may have seen some of the videos we put up on YouTube, and that's another story in itself, <laughs> um, on the origin of Islam. All right? And most people know Islam from... The teachings of Muhammad. Or they teach that content of Islam. But they don't have the history of how Islam originated. Before it was called Islam, it was called Persian mythology. Before Muhammad was born, in the Middle East, the, the, in Saudi Arabia, the religion of choice was Persian mythology. And Muhammad's family were, were priests of this particular religion. All right? So that was primarily an Arabic religion. There was no need for our people, the people of the Bible, to follow that new religion because our people had and understanding. We had the Torah. We had Christ well before Muhammad was on the scene. And we're going to go into that history in one moment. But I want you to read something that sticks out. This is a key prophecy, and I need you brothers and sisters to follow this carefully. You're Deuteronomy 28, right? All right. I need you to go down to. The 46th verse. Read that. Deuteronomy 28 and 60, 46. 46. Deuteronomy 28 and 46. 
and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the, the, the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So because <clears throat> we didn't want to serve the Most High for the abundance of all things, and we didn't appreciate what the Lord did for us, he put curses on us as a sign. And the wonder is when the other nations like the Arabs look at us and say, how can these people be the children of God? All the nations wonder at these curses. These people were once the chosen people of the Most High. Now look at them. These are Now, this is how we also know the Jewish people in Israel cannot be the Jews. They don't fit this curse of being lower than any other people in the earth. I need you to jump down. At your own discretion, you can go through the whole chapter, but we're just going to get bits, bits and pieces from it because we have a lot of history to go through. I need you to go down to the 64th verse. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Read that again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. The true children of Israel will be scattered amongst all people. Now examine that for a second. The true children of Israel will be scattered amongst all people of the earth. Scattered amongst all people. Now, look at this for a second. We have the Indian tribes, the Puerto Rican tribes that are scattered. We have brothers and sisters that are scattered that are still in Egypt, different parts of Africa. Okay? You had our people that was taken off the shores of Africa and brought over here. The true Israelites were scattered. And they would do what? Read the 64th verse again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one into the earth, even to the other. And there, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thy father nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. You shall serve wood and stone. When you look at the wood, the wood represents the cross. So we were primarily divided into these two religions. The wood for the cross, which is Christianity, and stone, which is the Kaaba. Titan against this system, we wanted a different way. We wanted a new religion because the religion that was handed down to us, we figured was a white man's religion. That was our mindset. So here comes Elijah Muhammad with what he called the black man's religion. Little did we know, and, and Malcolm X figured that out when he went over to Mecca, that all nations worship in Islam the same way all nations worship in Christianity. But it was the right message at the right time for a people that needed something different. That's what it was. So most people that was tired of fighting a people or fighting the system, a Christian system, rebelled against Christianity and joined Islam. Not because they thought Islam was the correct religion, because it seemed pro-black. It made black people feel that they had something separate from their slave masters. It's like we fall out of a pit. We clam out, out of a pit and we fall into a hole. We leave Christianity and we fall into something else without researching. I need you to go to Isaiah 29. And I need you to start at the 13th verse. Talking about the teachers that are set up in the earth today. 29 and 13? Yes. Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For so much as this people draw near... Wait. Excuse me. Wherefore the Lord said, For so much as this people draw near, draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from, far from me, it says, wherefore, you get it? Yeah. Can you see it? 
Yeah. Okay. It says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near with me, near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. That's why we don't know the Most High and we don't know the religions. We're not examining the religions that we're in. We, not, we don't realize that these precepts are taught by the precepts of men. There's men over all these religions controlling the children of Israel in captivity that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth into these religions. It says, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth. We have some of our people calling on Allah. Some people calling on God. But our hearts are far from the Most High. Because we are divided. A nation divided against itself cannot stand. Now let's go into this history a little bit, alright? So, yeah. Hold that down. Now, I need you all to go to Genesis, the 17th chapter. I need you all to go to Genesis 17. You don't know Ishmael. If you haven't read these chapters, we are not from the seed of Ishmael, we're from the seed of Israel. But let's see how Ishmael came on the scene. And we're going to go into some history to show you this. I need you to go to Genesis 16. You have that? Genesis 16. And let's start at the first verse. Genesis 16 and 1. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had in handmaiden an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Go ahead. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be, it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to, to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelled ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to his wife. Go ahead. And he went into, in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Go ahead. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I, I, have, given, I have given my maid unto thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is, is in thy hand, to do her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah, dealt, when, when, when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled her from her face. Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Tishur. You go ahead. And she said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou? One moment. Okay, take your time, huh? What verse you left off at? Go ahead. Genesis 16 and 8. Go ahead. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou, and, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. And the, Lord, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it, that it shall not be numbered, for multi multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. So this is the father of the Arabs right now. His name is Ishmael. 
Okay, now, this lets you know that Islam could not have come first. All right, because Abraham was following the God that would, that would eventually be the God of Israel before Ishmael was born. It says, and his name Ishmael, because the Lord have heard thy affliction. Read. What's the prophecy of Ishmael? Read. Genesis 16 and 12. And he will be a wild man. He will be a what? A wild man. Ishmael will be a wild man. That's the prophecy of Ishmael. That's why it's so hard for the Western world to take down the Arabs right now. Arabs is the last frontier of the New World Order. Why? Because they're wild. They don't think conventional. They'll airstrap a bomb on their family and, and blow up uh, anything. All right? Read. His hand will be against every man. His hand shall be against every man. As you can see in the Middle East, the Arabs are fighting like mad right now. The Pakistanis, the Saudi Arabians, the, the Iraqis. Read. And every man's hand against him. And then every man who will fight against him. At one point, Russia tried to take over uh, Afghanistan to no avail. So this is talking about prophecy. This is talking about a nation in the earth. All right? I need you to go straight to Deuteronomy 17 and 17 and to show you the difference between Ishmael and Isaac, which is our father. Ishmael is not our father. Isaac is our father. Deuteronomy 17 and 17. When the Lord blessed, when the Lord told Abraham that he would bless him with a child at the age of 100. 17 and 17, read. Oh, Genesis. Genesis 17 and 17. Genesis 17 and 17. Yes, read that. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is in hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years of, of ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto the Most High, O that, Ish, o that Ishmael might live before thee. And Abraham said unto the Most High, O that Ishmael might live before thee. Okay? So Abraham wanted Ishmael to be the chosen. Read. And the Most High said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So even though Ishmael was born, Ishmael was 13 years old at this time. The Most High said that his covenant would be with Isaac for an everlasting covenant. So even though he had two sons and Ishmael came first, the covenant, which is agreement between the, the Most High and man, came through our forefather Isaac. Isaac is our father, not Ishmael. This has nothing to do with religion. This is through blood. Read. And as for Ishmael. As for Ishmael, read. I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. He will have twelve princes, read. And I will make him a, a great nation. A great nation. Now, now, Muhammad came out of the tribe of Koresh, one of the princes, one of these twelve princes. Okay? He said he will make them a great nation. He gave them oil, resources. Read. But my covenant will, will, I, establish, will I establish with Isaac. But the covenant that the Most High made with Abraham would only go to Isaac. Isaac had 12. That covenant went to those 12. And the Negroes in America and the Indian tribes, the Jamaicans, the Haitians, they are part of that 12 that the covenant was made with. The people in, in whom the Most High is speaking of right here. But they'll never tell you that because they need you under their God. Okay? Go to Genesis 22 and 1. Right. Read that. Genesis 22 and 1. And it came to pass after these things that the Most High did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. Take thy what? 
thy only son Isaac. Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. So, e so even though the Most High, you know that the Most High gave Abraham two children. He told Abraham to bring his only son Isaac. Why did he say his only son? That's the only son he gave the promise to. Read. Whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of M Moriah. Go ahead. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Okay. So as you can see the scriptures is referring to him as the only son. All right. Why? Because Ishmael is not counted for the promise. When did Islam become a religion? Let's we'll show you. When did it become a religion? We'll show you. Before it was called Islam, before Muhammad grew up, it was called Persian mythology. Sort of like you have Muhammad who came around around six, the seventh century, and we were we were being converted in Africa and different parts of uh, Spain, in those areas as Israelites that scattered in the western parts and parts of Spain. We were being converted at that time during the time of the Crusades. All right, around the 12th century. You're talking about 600 years after Muhammad uh, was born and died. Through the sword, they were converting our people over there in those land, in, in those regions. A lot of those countries in Africa today are primarily Muslim countries, either Muslim or Christian, because they both were warring for the souls of the people, not just any people, for us. And that war rolled over here to America. All right? it's, it rolled right over. The birth of Islam. All right? I, while I can't read the whole thing, I'm going to go, I'm going to get some key points out of this. And this is all history that you can look up yourself. You can Google this. You can research it yourself. So this is no attack personally on anyone. This is history. This book is by Rudolf R. Windsor. Take your time, all right? All right. I'm in the second paragraph on page 45 when Muhammad was born. Let's get that. When, when Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshiping the sun, stars, spirits, and idols. It says when Muhammad was born, many Arabs were worshiping what? The sun, stars, spirits, and idols. The sun, stars, spirits, and idols. You can't say they weren't worshiping these things. Okay? The emblem for, the, for Islam is the, is, the, is the moon, the crescent moon and star. Okay? There was a female deity, Allah Parath, or Allah Paran, in Persian mythology. It was a female deity that was being worshipped well before Muhammad was on the scene. When Muhammad got power, they switched the name and just cut it off to Allah. So they was following one God for each day of the year. Read that part again. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshipping the sun, stars, spirits, and idols. Go ahead. The Arabs possessed 360 idols. They possessed 360 idols. Read. One for each day of the year. Go ahead. Muhammad was born... Well, 570 A.D., four years after the death of the imperial Justinian. So Muhammad was born 570 A.D., excuse me, the 6th century Muhammad was born. Let me correct that. Read. He was descended from the tribe of Koresh. He was from Koresh. Go ahead. And the family of Hashem. His mentality was pro prodigious. In his youth, he was never taught to read or write. So Muhammad did not know how to read or write. All right. So that lets you know when they was doing those translations in the mountains, he had help. All right. 
You're going to find out it was his family members up there in the mountains taking the Hebrew scrolls and converting it into a book. That's what was going on. Why? When you go into the when you go into the, the Quran, what books do you see? The first books you see are the first five books of Moses. So you they can't say that angel gave them that. That information was already there in the Torah. So they can't say the angel Gabriel came and gave him the first five books of Moses when the first five book, books of Moses were already in the earth. How did they get the first five books of Moses? Let's see. Read. But his imagination was super, superlative. Muhammad was an extraordinary handsome man and eloquent in motivating men with the power of words. Go ahead. In the early years of Muhammad's life, he passed his time as a shepherd boy. We must remember that many successful men have have ar arisen from from insignificant and humble conditions, watching the, watching the sun by day and the stars by night, left opportunity for Muhammad to con contemplate in solitude and reflect on the on the events of prof pro profan profundities. Wait profound ditties of the of this earth go ahead after muhammad became a camel driver it says after muhammad became a camel driver that was muhammad's occupation he would caddy people from one region of saudi arabia to the other sort of like a taxi driver today read he traveled to remote and intriguing lands he let he led his caverns to persia syria and egypt Tran transacting business with merchants of every kind. On his business trips, he met Jews. On his business trip, Muhammad met who? Jews. He ran into our people, which were the Jews. Now, mind you, Islam is not founded at this point. The Jews, at this point, had all the Septuagint, all the information of the Old Testament. The Jews had Christ at this time. This is five, seven, 570 years after Christ. Almost 600 years after after Christ. Okay? So the Jews' religion, or what you would want to call religion, was totally intact. Read. Christians and members of other sects. So he started running into different Jewish sects. Or Jews, our people. Read. He interrogated concerning the, the tenets of, of their religions. So he started asking our people questions about our religion. Read. He, he frequented the environment of the Jews and their rabbis, mostly because they were merchants and of omnipresent ethnic group. Go ahead. We were an omnipresent ethnic group. We were well respected spiritually. So what did he do? He laid on our doorstep and asked us questions about our one God. Now before this, Arabs had one God for each day of the year. Read on. Because he could not read or write. His ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him. Muhammad learned and extracted much from the Jewish religion. He learned and abstracted much from the Jewish religion. So he learned from our forefathers. Read. And compounded it with his new religion, Islam. And compounded it with his new religion, Islam. So before Islam was on the scene, the Jews had a religion that came down through Abraham Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons, all right, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons, all right, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> These people had their history. Now, I want you to go right here when Muhammad stormed Mecca. All right, one moment here. I want you to go when Muhammad returned to the city of Mecca when he came back. All right, all right. I want to read this real quick. Let, let me read this and then I'll let you read it. It says, Incidentally, I'm on the 47th, the 47th page of, of uh, from Babylon at Timbuktu. It says, incidentally, by this time, the Hebrew Old Testament has been translated into Arabic. So what did they do? They took our Old Testament Hebrew and translated it into Arabic. 
Yes. So this happened before the Quran was ever founded. And the Arabs were uh, rapturously pleased to read about their great ancestors in the story of the Hebrew patriarchs. This fact alone helped Muhammad to inspire in the Arabs the feeling of nationalism and racial pride because they had read in the Hebrew scripture that Ishmael was to become a great nation. So when they read in our scriptures that Ishmael would be a great nation, Muhammad used this as a pretext to take all those Arabs that were following one God for each day of the year and bring them under one God. Okay? I need you to go here when he stormed Mecca. All right? And I want you to go right here how they constructed Judaism, I mean, how they constructed their religion. But I want you to go here first on page 47. When Muhammad returned to Mecca, read that. When Muhammad returned, returned to the city of Mecca, the opposition was intensified against him. A law was enacted, a law was enacted that anybody who accepted Islam would be exiled. When the leaders of the city of Mecca were informed that Muhammad was gaining converts in Yathrib, Yathrib they conspired to assassinate him. So they wanted to assassinate him because he, he brought a new religion into Mecca. Now, mind you, the Kaaba stone was there during this time. The Kaaba stone was one of the 360 idols. So they'll tell you that this that, that the Kaaba stone was a place where where uh, Abraham made an altar to the Most High. But yet, this was one of the idols that was worshipped in Persian mythology, and it was there when Muhammad stormed Mecca. Hmm. Read on. This conspiracy mo motivated Muhammad to flee from Mecca to Yathrib. The night of Muhammad's flight to Yathrib, later called Medina, the city of the prophet, is known as the Hegira, the flight. Go ahead. The, the Mohammedian. The, the Mohammedian calendar commences with the year of the Hegira. It is the most, is it is the most important event in Islamic history. The Hegira occurred 622 A.D. when Muhammad was 50, 53 years of age. Now, mind you, over in the Middle East, these are holy days, so to speak. Okay, these are Arabic honor, honors to Islam or to Muhammad. Let me show you how close they fashioned Islam to what they call Judaism or the following of the Jews. They came very close to show you that without Israel, there would be no Islam. Read here on page 48, the prophet Muhammad. The prophet. You, probably, you probably want to let the light in here so you can see better. Go ahead, read that. The Prophet Muhammad adopted many principles and laws from the Jewish religion. The Prophet Muhammad adopted many principles and laws from the Jew religion. Read. First of all, the basic idea was monotheism. The basic idea of monotheism, that's the belief in one God. They, they took that from the Jews' understanding. Read. Which is the belief of one God. The Jewish confession of the, of the unity of God is... Shema Israel Adonah. What is it? El Elohinu Adonah Ehad. Exactly. That's how they say it in the Yiddish. But in the Hebrew, it's Shema Yasha Allah Allah Nawa Akad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Go ahead. The, the, the Muhammadian slogan is as follows. The, the, Muhammadian, the Muhammadian slogan is what? La ilaha illah. Allah, Muhammad, Muhammad, Rasul, Allah. So theirs is La, Ilaha, Ilah, Allah, Muhammad, Rasul, Allah. So they took here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, which is Deuteronomy 6, and they switched it to this for the Arabs. So everything they did patterned or mimicked the original Jews' content or religion. Read on. There is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. And then they, then they injected Muhammad as the prophet of Allah. Now, mind you, 
Before Muhammad, before Muhammad was on the scene, before he stormed Mecca, there was no such thing as a prophet Muhammad. The last prophet was Christ. All right. Let me read this. It says, Muhammad tried to construct his religion as closely as he could after the Jewish religion. He favored the Jews by accepting many of their laws and traditions. When the Jews refused to be converted, he commanded his followers to stop turning to the holy city of Jerusalem in prayer, but rather to turn to the city of Mecca. So before this fight happened between Israel and the Arabs, or Muhammad, Muhammad used to face Jerusalem. But because our people did not want to convert, he told his followers, no longer face Jerusalem, to face Mecca. He changed the Jew Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, or Fast Day, which he had accepted for the month of Ramadan. Muhammad changed the Jew forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There would be no Islam. I need you to read this right here. Where it says these, I want you to start where it says the Arab slave trade. Take your time, all right? Read that. The Arab slave trade is the longest yet least discussed. Move your hand over there so right. you can get some light. Read that. The Arab slave trade is the longest yet least discussed of the two major trades. It begins in the 7th century AD as Arabs and other Asians poured into northern and eastern Afri Africa under the banner of slave Islam. They came under the banner of Islam the same way conquerors on the European side came under the banner of Christianity. So it's no different. Read. Either converting or subjugating the African societies they came upon. In the beginning there, there was some level of mutual respect between the blacks and the more Caucasian Semit Semitic a Arabs. What is it? Ninja. Minja, a black man, is said to be the first Muslim killed in the battle, while another, B Bilal, Bilal, is regarded as a third of the faith. Do Nun Al -Mis -Mis Misra, born in, born in Upper Egypt near Sud Sudan, is regarded as the founder of S Sufism. Today, Sufism's greatest stronghold is the southern Egypt and Sudan. Islamic prosperity was based upon black as well as Arabic, Arabic genius. genius. But as Islamic property grew, let's go there. But as Islamic property grew, so did an air of hostility. hostility. So did an air of hostility towards many blacks, Muslims, and or otherwise. Some Arabs complain. Some Arabs complained about having to work next to black in high positions. So Arabs even back there complained about working next to blacks. Yes, they, they don't like you. And it's amazing because some of these brothers in these mosques, they know it. They're told to serve these Arabs that come from the Middle East. And these Arabs have no business being over you when it comes to religion or understanding. They have no business. Read. Read. After the prophet's death, even the, even the descendants of Belal received negative treatment, Arabic writing became laced with anti-black sentiment. sentiment. So they had anti-black sentiment wo wo woven into the Islamic origin. Let me finish reading this. These new attitudes towards blacks by Arabs marked the beginning of African enslavement. Though not based solely on race, the Arab slave trade did focus heavily upon Africans whom Arabs now saw as inferior to themselves. At first, these Arabs raided African villages themselves, seeking humans for sale. This not being always successful, they soon enlisted the aid of fellow African Muslims or recently converted blacks, wrapping themselves within Islam. These converts rationalized the slavery of their non-Muslim brethren as the selling of unbelievers. At other times, the Arabs would demand tribute to the form of human bodies from Africans, wary of the fight against Arabic Islamic 
incursions. It says here, due to enormous length of the Arab slave trade from 700 to 1911 A.D. Now, mind you, they did this up to the 1900s. It is impossible to be certain of the number of Africans sold in this system. Estimates place the numbers somewhere around 14 million. At least 9.6 million African women and 4.4 African men. It has been estimated that in all, at least 14 to 20 million African men, women, and children died throughout this trade. Fourteen to twenty million. So here's a question. Why would any brother in his right mind with this history want to be a Muslim? Why? Why? This is why. Get Hosea 4 and 6 out the Bible. Why would a brother in this day and time, that's just like a brother being a Christian. Christian was built on bloodshed, but so was Islam. What's the truth? Read Hosea 4 and 6 for me, brother. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why. We're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The, lo the knowledge we lack is in the book. Read, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be, th that thou shalt be no priest to me. So, because we rejected the knowledge of the Most High, the Most High have rejected us. I hear brothers say it all the time, brother. The Bible tampered with, and then I say, okay, show me what's tampered with. You have to know the book to know what's tampered with. Read it first. Read it, then tell me it's tampered with. Well, brother, uh, King James was a homosexual. What proof you have of that? Why, why are they trying to smear any, anything that relates to the Bible? Why? Be, why? Because they try to, they always smearing you. That's why. You're being smeared. That's why. <laughs> anything that's attached to you gets soiled. They're trying to keep you from understanding the only truth that's in the earth, that you are the children of the most time. The book belongs to you. They want to get you out of your book. This is your understanding, the only truth that's in the earth, that you are the children of the most time. The book belongs to you. They want to get you out of your book. This is your strength, this book. Don't ever let them take you out of this book. They can't handle this book when you're in it. So they have to lie to, to keep you from picking it up. Then they'll say, well, you can't follow no man. Christ was just a prophet. Well, if you can't follow no man, why are you following Muhammad? You done made Muhammad your Christ. Okay? Christ was the last prophet. Get Matthew the 11th chapter. Let's get that real quick. These, these religions are trying to take your salvation away. Have took your national origin away. Have, have stolen your, your, your soul. Have been stolen. Christ was the last prophet. If you don't think he's the last prophet. Anyone that's Muslim out there, please, I need you to tell me what prophecy Muhammad said would come to pass. I'll be waiting for you. He did the Arabs a service. His service wasn't for us. He wanted to show the Arabs that they had a great history in, in, in the Hebrew content. Okay? That was for them because they needed... They needed one God. They were dealing with all these different gods, so they needed Muhammad to come back there and show them to put down all these different gods. 
that information wasn't for you because we already had one God. We didn't need Muhammad to come to us. That was for the Arabs. Let's go to Matthew 11, right? To show you that Christ was the last prophet. Start at the 11th verse. Matthew 11 and 11. Right? Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Go ahead. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom... I'm sorry about that. Start at the ninth verse. But what went ye out for to see? But what went ye out, out for to see? And prophet, a prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. So Christ asked the question. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? I mean, what are you looking for? A prophet? Christ says, Yea, I'll say unto you, and more than a prophet. Christ is not just a prophet. He's more than a prophet. So you have some of these Muslims that try to pacify you. Yeah, Christ was a prophet. No, nah, he was more than a prophet. Because without his sacrifice, Israel have no chance. Without Christ's blood, there's no sacrifice for us. And then the Father would not accept us unless we accept his Son. That's important. So you can't tell me that I need to reject Christ and accept Muhammad. Muhammad didn't die for none of our sins. Read. Matthew 11 and 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. I send my messenger before thy face. <laughs> before, it says, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Right? And we know that John spread the message that would prepare the way for the last prophet. Read. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least of the king in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Read on. And from the days of John the Baptist until, until now the king of heaven suffereth, suffereth violence. And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Let you know the kingdom of heaven is God's people. We were suffering violence by the Romans. Read. And violent, take it by force. And the Romans took us by force. That's how we ran into Africa. We was in Timbuktu for a minute. That's what it says. And from Babylon to Timbuktu, we were in the golden city until the Arabs founded us. They found us and they ratted us out. We was fleeing from the face of the serpent in Africa. And the Arabs conspired with the other nations to enslave us. Why they don't teach this in your churches or in your mosques? Why? Because when they're exposed, their gods have no power over you. You're going to realize that your God is the God of gods. Read. Matthew 11 and 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. All the law and the prophets prophesied until John. So that lets you know, after John, there's no more prophets. Christ was it. That's it. Read that part again. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Until John. So John paved the way for Christ. And Christ was the last prophet. There's no place in the scriptures that said that he will send another prophet. The comforter who Christ would send is the Holy Spirit. That's a spirit. That's not a man. And it's not even a masculine at that. It's a feminine, the Holy Spirit. All right. The Romans put he in the scripture. So Muhammad is not the spirit that will be sent to lead us into all truth. Because that spirit speaks of Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here. I just want to go into a little history. Real quick. But since I know a lot of you brothers and sisters are still on. 
I'm going to open it up to answer a few questions. One moment. Without his sacrifice, Israel have no chance. Without Christ's blood, there's no sacrifice for us. And then the Father would not accept us unless we accept his Son. That's important. So you can't tell me that I need to reject Christ and accept Muhammad. Muhammad didn't die for none of our sins. Read. Matthew 11 and 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. I send my messenger before thy face. <laughs> before, it says, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Right? And we know that John spread the message that would prepare the way for the last prophet. Read. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least of the king in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Read on. And from the days of John the Baptist until, until now the king of heaven suffereth, suffereth violence. And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Let you know the kingdom of heaven is God's people. We were suffering violence by the Romans. Read. And violent, take it by force. And the Romans took us by force. That's how we ran into Africa. We was in Timbuktu for a minute. That's what it says. And from Babylon to Timbuktu, we were in the Golden City until the Arabs founded us. They found us and they ratted us out. We was fleeing from the face of the serpent in Africa. And the Arabs conspired with the other nations to enslave us. Why they don't teach this in your churches or in your mosques? Why? Because when they're exposed, their gods have no power over you. You're going to realize that your God is the God of gods. Read. Matthew 11 and 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. All the law and the prophets prophesied until John. So that lets you know, after John, there's no more prophets. Christ was it. That's it. Read that part again. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Until John. So John paved the way for Christ. And Christ was the last prophet. There's no place in the scriptures that said that he will send another prophet. The comforter who Christ would send is the Holy Spirit. That's a spirit. That's not a man. And it's not even a masculine at that. It's a feminine. The Holy Spirit. All right. The Romans put he in the scripture. So Muhammad is not the spirit that would be sent to lead us into all truth. Because that spirit speaks of Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here. I just want to go into a little history. Real quick. But since I know a lot of you brothers and sisters are still on. I'm going to open it up. To answer a few questions. One moment. I'm going to open it up to answer a few questions here. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, that's good. Don't look like there's many. Uh, that's a blessing. I don't see too many people uh, putting anything in tonight. That's good. Okay, there they go. 
Okay. Okay, what questions I have? Okay, take your time so I can get through all these questions here. Okay, we have someone asking, can we explain Ezekiel 34, 15? That Ezekiel 34, 15 through 18? Let's go there. I wanted to put that out there because I did an Islam study and I, I didn't go into the history from Babylon to Timbuktu. So I wanted to, to, to add that tonight. Someone asked a question, Ezekiel 34. Right? Let me go there. If you have any other questions, you can type them in. I can probably go about 10 minutes over since I'm home tonight. The, uh, the, the internet wasn't working in our building, so I had to leave. That's why I'm, I was so late. So we had to come back home to do this for you. Ezekiel 34, 15. Through 18, I think you said, right? I think it said 15 and 18. 15 and 18, okay. Um, might as well read all the way through, right? Let's start at the 15th verse. And I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down to the Lord power. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. Okay, the person... I'm going to answer that question for you, Marlon, but the person, when it says he'll call them to lie down, that's speaking of our rest. We're going to finally rest. Okay, you ever get up and, 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 and make excuses for not going to work? It's talking about resting. When he says, I shall make them lie down. It says, I will seek that which was lost. The people that was lost are the 12 tribes of Israel. Go, go to Matthew 15 and 24 real quick to show you who the lost is. Hold Ezekiel. Hold Ezekiel because you want to go back and answer that question. 15. Matthew 15 and 24. Read it. Matthew 15 and 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep of Israel, it, it, they're the lost sheep. So it's not talking about anyone. It's talking about the chosen people that were scattered throughout the four corners. They're the lost sheep. So it's not talking about anyone. It's talking about the chosen people that were scattered throughout the four corners. All right. And it says, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down and say, say of the Lord power. I will seek that which was lost, talking about Israel, and bring them again that which was driven away. That's what's going on now. He's calling us back. All right? And will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment, talking about the empires and governments that, who have made themselves fat, feeding on God's people. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and rams, and he goats. Seemeth it is a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk to the deep waters, but ye must, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. So let's get that again. Read, read the 18th verse again. Seemeth it a small thing unto, unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. Let's get that. The residue of the pastures was talking about our people being taken down by the Europeans in 70 A.D. So I want you to follow this and I'm going to give you the precepts, all right? If you're following this. Hold that. I need you to go to Daniel 8 and 21. Right, Daniel 8 and 21. So hold Matthew. Hold, 
let Matthew go, let everything go except Ezekiel. Because we're breaking down how they tread the pastures of the Most High. Who is it talking about? 8 and 21. It says, Seemeth a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastures, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. Read that again. Read that. Ezekiel? Yeah. Ezekiel. No, no, no. Read Daniel. the one in Daniel. Go ahead. Uh, Daniel 8 and 21. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. Go ahead. And the great horn that is between the eyes is the first king. So when it's talking about the rams and the goats, it's talking about Grecia, who eventually became Rome, that took down Israel in 70 AD when it says trampled the pastures. Let me show you when that happened. Drop that. Hold Ezekiel. You got that? Yeah. I need you to go to Luke. Did you go to Luke? The um the twenty first chapter. And I need you to read the twentieth verse. Twenty one and twenty, read that. Luke twenty one and twenty. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the des desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Jerusalem in, in Judea Matter of fact, read the twenty fourth verse. That's the one. 24. Read it. Luke 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Talking about Israel in 70 AD fell by the edge of the sword and did what? And shall be led captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. It's talking about our land being trampled by the Gentiles up until this time here. Go back to Ezekiel. So He's going to judge those people that have made themselves fat and trampled the pastures of Israel. That links to Ezekiel. Go back to Ezekiel 34. You there? Yeah. Now read the 18th verse again. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten. Matter of fact, read the 17th and 18th verse. And as for you of my flock, thus said the Lord power, behold, a judge between cattle to cattle, between the rams of, and the he goats. See that? He's judging the other nations. That's what it's talking about here. He's He's uh, paralleling people or nations to he goats or goats or cattle. Read. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. Go ahead. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with their feet, with your feet, and they drink that which ye have filed with your feet. Go ahead. Therefore thus said the Lord power unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Read on. Because ye have thrust with... <laughs> be, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Because ye have thrust with, si with, with side and with shoulder, shoulder. Go ahead. And pushed all the disease with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Till ye have scattered them abroad. So they're talking about us being taken down by the nations in 70 AD and scattered, fulfilling the prophecy in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And it's a little deep, but you need the precepts to break this down. You just can't read this and get the understanding. Because he go from Israel lying down and being protected and him judging the nations that have scattered us. I hope that helped you. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Brother, did you get, the one that, that asked that question, did you get that understanding with the precepts we just pulled? Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Well, just type in yes if you did. Okay, who's that? Somebody else has a question before that, though, right? Let's see. That's him there, right? Somebody had a question before that. Somebody asked a question. I'm going to get back to you, brother, but someone asked a question in 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. Do we as women wear covering at all times or when praying or prophesying? In Corinthians 11 chapter, it says when praying or prophesying. So we only stick with the scriptures. So if you are if you are in the book, that's sort of like a prayer or a connection or in a church setting 
where a book can, where the Bible can come out, you must have your head covered. All right. If you are studying the Bible and praying, you must have, if you're reading the Bible, you must cover your head. Now, in old times, the covering was not just that. The covering showed that a woman was married. That way, it was less. Covered is when you're praying or prophesying or going into the book, because that's what the Most High said. I hope that answered. But again, if you are married, because I'm not going to circumvent someone's household. If your husband said, listen, he prefer you to have your head covered, <laughs> then follow what your husband said. Follow your husband. Um, let's see here. Um, someone asked, according to Acts, to the Gentiles have to obey the law. Okay. Let me get that. Get, get the book of Acts real quick. Acts 21. I'm going to answer that question here. But I want to do it in order. I don't want to ignore anyone here. You have it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got 21. Acts 21. Let's see what the, the Gentiles must follow. Read Acts 21 and 24 and 25. Acts 21 and 24. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that, that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself walkest orderly and keepest the law. So this was a punishment for the Jews. They had to do these things, okay, and keep the law. But for the Gentiles, Peter made it clear in the 25th verse. What about the Gentiles? Read the 25th verse. Acts 21 and 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe. So, so this is the law for the Gentiles which believe. Take your time. Go ahead. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that that they observe not such things. So there are certain customs that the Jews had to follow that the Gentiles didn't have to follow in the church. Save, which means accept. What do the Gentiles have to do? Save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols. So first of all, the Gentiles in the church must first keep themselves from things offered to idols. So all the holidays and all the food... That's, that, that, that is related to these holidays, they have to abstain from. Read. And from blood. And from blood. And from strangled. And from fornication. It says, and from blood and from strangled. Those are animals that were sacrificed to those pagan gods. And from fornication. And from sleeping all around the place, sleeping with homosexuals and men with men. He told the Gentiles, you can't do none of that stuff. Get yourself a husband like the Jews get themselves. Like a wife, get yourself a husband. A husband, get yourself a wife. So these were the laws initially in the church. All right? That the Gentiles initially didn't come into following all the laws. The biggest thing with them is they had to put down their pagan gods. And they had to stop the fornication. And from there, eventually being around the Jews, they learned the Jews' ways and started following them. Like Cornelius. But that pressure wasn't put on the Gentiles at first. I hope that gave you the understanding on that. Okay? All right. Let's see. What's the next question here? Did Malcolm X discover the, the same origin of Islam? The answer to that, Marlin, is absolutely yes. Malcolm X was... A brilliant brother during that time. The Most High had a spirit on him. And he was willing to stand for truth. And he wasn't going to take strictly what Elijah Muhammad gave him. 
It comes a time when you're led by the Holy Spirit. And that same thing that drove him to become the man he was, drove him to look beyond Elijah Muhammad. And he went to the Middle East, and he's seen that Islam was no different than Christianity. Same thing. So then he started going more so on an African movement, trying to find himself separate from that nation of Islam, which was supposed to have been a black man's religion. All right? And through that, you know, eventually it cost, it, it, it cost him his life. He also found out that our people were from the children of Israel. He said, we are the valley of the dry bones. He used to go into the Bible and show that. But when he started going into that information, eventually they killed him. So yes, Malcolm did figure it out. Because he was searching the Most High the whole time. He was searching for the Most High and he found him. Okay, someone says that there was a YouTube video saying that Israel... <laughs> comes from the name of three Egyptian gods. Isis, Ra, okay. All right. First of all, let's examine this. Israel is what we're speaking in English. In the Hebrew, it's Yasha Allah. So how can we take the English way it's spelled and relate it to ancient Egypt? It's ridiculous. In Hebrew, it's Yasha Allah. Or Yashrael. So how can they... There's no eyes in that. <laughs> ridiculous. It's just more philosophy. Go to Colossians 2 and 8 when you get the opportunity. It's ridiculous. It will only drive you mad if you sit there. Who sat there in a room and looked at all the gods and put the words together and say, This is Israel. Ridiculous. Get Colossians 2 and 8. It was a Y, not an I. So how can it be ISIS? Sometimes you have to back away from those YouTube clips. I'm telling you, they're going to drive you. They, that's, them clips are going to drive people mad. Read Colossians 2 and 8. Read that. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So you can't be spoiled through philosophy. All that Egyptology is straight philosophizing. Somebody just trying to get deep with words. It have no root, no meaning, no spiritual content, nothing that 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 leads you back to your your God. Read after the tradition of men. After so you can't be spoiled through philosophy. All that Egyptology is straight philosophizing. Somebody just trying to get deep with words. It have no root, no meaning, no spiritual content, nothing that 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 leads you back to your your God. Read after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. And it's just the rudiments of the world, traditions of men. It have nothing to do with the Most High. So I mean, we get simple even examining things like that. It makes us simple if we go into some, some man's philosophy. And not after Christ. It's not after Christ. Israel actually means something. It means to be a prince of the Most High. The Most High is king. We're the princes. It means to be a prince of God. It's, it's an actual Hebrew word, mind you. Yasha Allah. Okay, let's see. I think we're all out of questions, right? Let's see. Okay, this is Sister Mel, Brother Terrence's wife. Can you break down the millennium reign and revelations also? Do Gentiles have to follow the law? Dietary as well. All right. The millennium reign... Go to Revelations 20. Read the fourth verse. Revelations 20 and 4. Uh, someone asked, I'm going to answer this real quick. Someone asked, who is the Elohim? In the Hebrew, it's Allahayim, which means angels or powers. Forces. Okay. 
So let's not get caught up. I want y'all. I don't want you to get caught up with the Elohim because Allahayim just don't mean the positive or righteous forces. It's also the negative forces. They are fallen Elohims or Allahayim. All right. It means angels, forces, or powers. All right. All right. She want me to break down the uh, the millennium reign. Yeah. Uh, let's try to make it quick. Read, read Revelations 20 and 4. Read that. Revelations 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded with the witnesses of, of Yeshia. Go ahead. And for the, and for the word of God, and which, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So these are those that will reign with Christ a thousand years. The people you've just read in Revelations 20 and 4. From the disciples who were martyred up until our time. The people that reject the mark of the beast. So these are the people that will reign with Christ a thousand years. Read. Five. Read on. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So the rest of the dead are the people that are... That are in the uh, in hell. They will not live again. Or they will not be brought to the final judgment. Until a thousand years are finished. So they will be there in torments. Until after Christ's thousand year reign. Read. This is the first resurrection. That's the first resurrection. So those that come up the dead in Christ. You want to be in that first temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. Go ahead. Re remember ye not. That when I was yet with you. I told you these things. Go on. And now, and, no, and now ye know that withholding that he might be revealed in his time. Go ahead. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. It's telling you, it, it, Paul is telling you right there that the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. What are you looking for? He's already working. He's going from pope to pope. He started back then and then he went from pope to pope. That's an old Babylonian ritual. They do eight days of black smoke and the eighth day... On, they do seven days of black smoke, and on the white on on the on the eighth day it's white smoke. What is that? That's a that's a move from one body to the next. The spirit when your popes die. He was working back then, and he's living in each pope. The, it's a move from one body to the next. The spirit when your popes die. He was working back then, and he's living in each pope. The mystery of iniquity doeth already work. He was working in Rome. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So the Most High is letting him work. So stop looking for one Antichrist. There's many. And the Pope is the leader. Okay? You can get that information out of a book to let you know that that old Babylonian ritual where the popes give up their body as a host for the same spirit. That's why they make the same gestures. They walk alike. They act alike because it's the same demon. It's a book called um, Satan's Angels Exposed. So stop looking for one guy. You, you're getting thrown off in privacy if you look for one guy. It's Put together, let no man put asunder. So if a man and woman is married together already, what can you do? Matthew 25 and 31. The only thing you can do is wish them a happy marriage. And that they and, and that, that this marriage is blessed and they follow the Most High God, the God of Israel. Read that. Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son, Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be a gathering, gathered all nations. Read that again. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Hold on, let me get that phone out of the way. All right, read that. And before him shall be gathered all nations. It says, and before Christ shall be gathered all nations, and what? And he shall separate them one from another as shepherd. As a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. So when Christ come, Christ do any separating. Christ do separating now. If if you got a husband and wife that one following Christ and another is following something else, the Lord separate. 
But the Most High says what Christ told uh, the Pharisees that what the Most High put together, let no man put asunder. So if the Lord pulled people together, who are we to look at it and say it's not right? Okay? As long as they serve the Most High, let the Most High be the judge of that. Okay. Miss Anderson. Miss is Anderson, that's your name, Anderson Seven. Let me ask you, Miss Anderson. Uh you you said you're whose wife? You you are Tremaine's wife? That's what she said. Okay, Miss Sanders. Okay. Okay, Miss Sanders. All right. Let me ask you, Miss Sanders. Are you, are you a Gentile? Why do you keep asking questions about Gentiles? <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, but I need you to type in. Listen, if if, if your husband is listen, if your husband is how do you know your husband is a Gentile? <laughs> Let me go to Corinthians back. Uh, here's something for you, Miss Anderson. Read the thirteenth verse. First Corinthians seven and thirteen. Read. This is what the scriptures say. First Corinthians seven and thirteen, and the woman with with had an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Period. And you notice it's not saying what nation one is from. You see that? If your husband is pleased to dwell with you, he love you. He's not stopping you from following the Most High. Love him. That's your flesh. You're not alone. You're part of him. He's part of you. All right. Pray for him. You're being. He's being cleansed through your prayer. You said, "What about friends that say they don't have to?" What you? I don't understand. What you mean? What about friends who say they don't have to? What? What about friends? Follow the Most High. All right, sister. I'm glad to see you. You tuning in also. I I want to put this out there. Um, we're gonna have. Some good classes on on uh, Justin TV every Friday. Oh, sure, foot soldier, I got you. We're going to uh, have some good classes every Friday night. We're going to go into some studies, and hopefully, these studies be on the next level of understanding. And uh, if y'all tune in, I think that you, you'll enjoy it. As far as growing in the spirit, also. We're going to have some fruits of the spirit classes where brothers and sisters can grow and, 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 and fight temptation too. We have to go into those scriptures on how we can battle and keep ourselves intact. Because it's like we get together and then we get attacked. Then we, we long to come together again and then we attack. We have, to stay, we have to stay in the same spirit even when we're not together. We have to stay strong. So... We have to go into the, some of those fruits of the spirit scriptures also. Um, the brother foot showed, so the brother foot soldier asked. The brother foot so, showed soldier, excuse me, asked, "What about the man child in Revelations? You talk about in Revelations, uh, the twelfth chapter, soldier." The brother foot showed so the brother foot soldier asked the brother foot so, showed soldier excuse me asked 
What about the man child in Revelations? You talk about in Revelations, uh, the 12th chapter, soldier. The man child is Christ. Go to Revelations 12. Uh, Revelations 12. Let me get it with you. Real quick. Uh... Let's get it. One moment. Exact passage. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Read it. Before you go there, I need you to read the first and second verse. Twelve one and two. Twelve one and two. Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and her head, and upon her head a, a crown of twelve stars. Go ahead. And she being with, with child cried, tra travailing in birth, in pain to be delivered. Okay. Keep going. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. That's the EU, the European community. The seven heads represents Rome, and the EU came out of Rome. Go ahead. And his tail drew the third part of, of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. That's talking about Lucifer taking the angels. Read. And the dragon stood before the woman, which, which, was, which was ready to be de delivered, for to devour her child. As soon as it was born. The dragon was with her rod to take out Christ at birth. Alright. Now go to the 13th verse. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth. He, per he, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So when, when Christ was crucified and got full power of heaven and earth and hell. <laughs> Satan got wroth with the people that bear him. Which was Israel. And they went after the people. That bear the man child. They started destroying Israel. And that's when our people were destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. And fled into Africa. Flee in Roman persecution. The man child is Christ. The churches teach that that's the church. But there's no scriptures. That, that's, to, that's talking about actual people that, that have been persecuted. Since Christ's crucifixion. All right? Someone is still trying to bring in eating unclean food. Right? Are you good? You good? You st I mean, we can't stop you from eating it if that's what you want to eat. Okay. I mean, what you're trying to tell you, go into an emergency room sometime and see our people. That's what happens when we break the, the laws of the Most High. High blood pressure and every other type of pressure. I seen one one clip on YouTube where they pulled a big worm. Matter of fact, you can actually uh, go to YouTube and put worm, type in worm from pork, and you'll see a sister had to have an operation to get a worm taken out of her head that was eaten through her head from pork. So, if you want to, if you think it's sanctified. You know, may the Lord be with you. So with that, we're going to say we love you. We went over a little bit. I'm sorry I wasn't able to answer the rest of the questions. Um, but uh, maybe we can answer some more next week. And I, I need to, to rest my brain. You good? Yeah. All right. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. You got it? Yeah. Ahaya by Yeshem Yeshaya, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. So y'all have the new. We love you all too, brothers and sisters. Um, so you have the new YouTube site. We're going to be putting new teachings up. And a matter of fact, we're going to just give it to them now. We, we've been holding back a little bit and haven't been putting certain things up. We're just going to load it with information. It's going to be so much information. I, they're going to have to cancel us three times. All right? And um, our Passover is April 10th. You all are invited. Everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, we love you all. And um, we're still looking for those applications that's going to be back by the end of the month for the Exodus. And someone asks us, do we have a plan? I'm, sh I'm, I'm about to show you our plan. Okay? This is exclusive information here. I seen one one clip on YouTube where they pulled a big worm. Matter of fact, you can actually uh, go to YouTube and put worm, type in worm from pork, and you'll see a sister had to have an operation to get a worm taken out of her head that was eaten through her head from pork. So, if you wanna, if you think it's sanctified. You know, may the Lord be with you. So with that, we're going to say we love you. We went over a little bit. I'm sorry I wasn't able to answer the rest of the questions. Um, but uh, maybe we can answer some more next week. And I, I need to, to rest my brain. You good? Yeah. All right. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. You got it? Yeah. by Yashem Yeshaya, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. So y'all have the new... We love you all too, brothers and sisters. Um... So you have the new YouTube site. We're going to be putting new teachings up. And a matter of fact, we're going to just give it to them now. We've been holding back a little bit and haven't been putting certain things up. We're just going to load it with information. It's going to be so much information. I, they're going to have to cancel us three times.